WPKN 89.5 FM. All right, this is Connecticut Rocks. I'm your host, Bobby D. And in the studio right now, the legendary man himself, George Morgio. Are you there, George? I'm here. All right. Yeah, George Morgio in the 1960s in a band called North Atlantic Invasion Force. Some people know him as NAIF, N-A-I-F. And we're going to talk with George about those days. George, how old were you when you were in NAIF? I was 21. 21? Yeah. Oh, wow. You were old for that time, I I, guess. I was old, actually. (laughs) And I'm much older now. All right. Well, we're going to get right in. I've always liked Elephant and My Tambourine, actually. That was a B-side, right? That was a B-side, yeah. 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 But uh, let's see. Big hit for you guys. What, Blue and Green Ground? or Well, Black and White probably was the biggest. Blue and Green Ground was our first single. All right. Well, let's do that. We'll play the first single, and then we'll play Black and Green, um, the Gown, uh, Black and White. Black excuse and White. I was, black a and white. Col- I was a big color guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That black and White, I remember I, I, I've i seen different studio versions of it, right? There's other like demos and all kinds of things. That yeah, exist. there's a lot of stuff floating around. I'm like amazed. Okay, well, let's get right into this so people get an idea of what the sound of NAFE is. And George, you you have a solo album you released uh, a few years back. Yeah, a few years ago, I did a acoustical solo album, which I'm going to do another one very shortly. So. Oh, cool! And you brought your guitar with you, so we'll do some stuff live. Uh, It'd be great. Great. All right. So here's here's the first ever single from NAFE North America North Atlantic Invasion Force, dating back to what '66. No, actually, that was probably 64. 64? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Fly up through the sky, and when you come down, lay your blue and green ground. You fly once again, before you leave brown, leave your blue and green ground. When life starts to drain, you can't stop it. There you go. That's the first track from the existence of North Atlantic Invasion Force. Blue and green, blue and green ground, right? Gown. Gown. Ground. Ground. The, the last <laughs> lyric in the song was ground. <laughs> so a lot of people make that uh, distinction. Okay. George, tell, tell me about the days of North Atlantic Invasion Force. Who were the guys in the band? Well... The band kind of kicked around in the very beginning. It started out at uh, Quinnipiac College, and there was a you know, number of different players. But when uh, we started to you know get settled down, it was uh, Jimmy Gaffney, who was not with us any longer, on drums. Um, Ed Dombrowski was our keyboard player. He's no longer with us. Nick Tarazzi was a lead guitar player, and Neil Mitchell, a bass player. And at the time, I was just lead singer, didn't play at all, but eventually started playing guitar. Okay. Now, the guys that are still around, have you, you seen them recently? I, I bumped into uh, Neil and Nick about, uh, I don't know, must be two or three years ago. But um, I've been, like, so busy that I just, I don't know, I'm kind of semi-retired and I don't have time for anything anymore. When I worked, I had more time. I can't figure it out. Okay. Well, I just I just love this B-side. I got to play that, the, the B-side of uh, Black on White. Elephant on my tambourine. tambourine Can you tell me about how that song came to be? Uh, 
Um, it actually, we were a big fan of the Young Bloods, and they did a lot of that kind of offbeat country kind of thing. And we just said, you know what, we're going to try to do something like that. And it just kind of evolved into Elephant My Tambourine. We recorded that one um, in New York at A&R. Um, it was a lot of fun doing that one because it was kind of a happy-go-lucky kind of tune. So we had a good time with that one. Yeah, was it is it was it uh, designed to be a B side or? Yeah, it was actually designed to be a B side, oh. and I, I think it really wasn't on the. I don't even remember. I think it wasn't on the backside of Black on White. It was oh. on the backside of um, the Rainmaker, which was the follow up oh. to Black on White, which kind oh, okay. of got really messed up, and that's why they flipped it around and played that as the the A side of the record. By then, the band was already starting to fray and <laughs> kind of disintegrate. So. Okay. I've played this here on Connecticut Rocks before, but George, it's much better to hear it while you're here. This is North North Atlantic Invasion Force, Elephant in My Tambourine. These songs were done just a few years ago, right? In most just people's a, yeah, life. a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is Elephant in My Tambourine from North Atlantic Invasion Force, released back in 1960. Probably like 67, 68. Actually, probably 68. Oh, yeah. okay. That's North Atlantic Invasion Force with Elephant in My Tambourine. George Morgio is here. George, uh, was that your idea to add that circus sound at the end? Yeah, actually it was. I wanted to get like a steam calliope kind of sound. And I was thinking back, we recorded that song, I think it was probably 1965, and it was kind of on the shelf, and they needed something for the backside of... Um, Oh, okay. The Rainmaker. And so they kind of they pr- pulled it out of the archives. Pulled it out of the archives. Right? Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, I read some interviews that you did talking about how um, songs came to be back in the days of the North Atlantic Invasion Force, and you were basically the pri- you consider yourself the primary songwriter, and, right, and yeah. a- arrangements were were group arrangements uh, were a group thing, right? Yeah. In Connecticut at the time, uh, Nafe was pretty popular, right? Yeah, actually, we had a pretty good run there, especially when Black on White came out. Things kind of broke loose for us. We went on tour and. Because it was successful in a lot of different markets, um, Flint, Michigan was number two for a while out there, and so we traveled out there. 
And uh, we had some success wherever it was played, but there was a little bit of a conflict at the time because um, in 68, the race rights were kind of on, and mm-hmm. they equated that, which had nothing to do with race at all. It was about freedom of the press, really. Um, so a lot of places wouldn't play the record. And then uh, I don't know what happens with bands. Usually something happens and it disintegrates, you know. Well, I, I, I've read some things where you talk about the inspiration for writing uh, certain songs. And you made a comment about you write a lot of your material about, you know, current events or things that are going on, you know, in terms of conflicts and such. Right. Yeah. Uh, the war, obviously, in right. the 60s. Yeah. Uh, Black on White. Tell me about that song. Um, that song, uh, again, that was, I, I wrote it in, I think probably late 67 and, uh, we recorded it and sent it out to, um, this guy in New York, his name was, um, Ed White and he got us hooked up with, um, uh, it was, um, Mr. G records and got that, you know, kind of got out through that label. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, it was something that, you know, again, everything was being affected with the war at the time and, um, my thought was that, you know, the freedom of speech, which black and white kind of relates to the printing press idea. Right. Um, but it, no one really caught it. it. was so entangled in lyrics that they really didn't get that message. So Yeah. First Amendment was in, in freedom of speech was a, a amazingly tested back then. Yeah, right. Um, so let's let's get right into that because I know there's there's different versions that have floated around of this in terms of uh, studio versions, demos, all kinds of things. Yeah, what happened was the um, the producer after the the trouble that he was having getting it played in some markets, he said, "Come on, write some other lyrics for it." So there was two different versions of it uh-huh. with different lyrics that were a little more. One was called "In the USA" and "Love Is No Game" or "Love Is No Game." Yes, was the other one, yeah. Yes. So that was the reason for that, because he was trying to get it. And then it was kind of too late by then. It was We already had gotten into the 70s, and things were changing. So so do you recall any particular markets that said no to this song? Well, I mean, we tried to get it played up in Hartford, and they wouldn't play it in Hartford. Or in New Haven, it was number one for quite a while. Wow. Know, two or three weeks. And um, kind of wherever it was played, was uh, there was success. So we were kind of you know pumped up about it when it happened. It's interesting but, in Connecticut, even that close proximity. Hartford said no. New Haven, of yeah, course, embraced it. we went up it. to, actually, it was uh, Bertha Porter up at, um, what was the radio station up there? I uh, can't remember it. But, yeah, uh, she, RC, R, or was it RCH or something maybe then? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Hey, mine is a terrible thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, she just would have no part of it, so okay. I don't know. Well. And then, you know, there were places... Mm-hmm. Um, out west that wouldn't play it oh wow you know, the the thing that was amazing is i kind of tracked where the success of the record was mm-hmm. um it was all like kind of blue collar work in you know detroit um bowling green kentucky there was a lot of industrial kind of places where it was played where it did very well so i don't know what the correlation of that is but hmm. that's what happened at the time all right you want to introduce this song black on white n-e-i-f <laughs>
There you go. That's the Greek track from Naif.